What does a contract for Yamamoto look like? A lot the price of money goes and a lot, up every yeah. day. Yesterday's yeah. price oh. ain't today's price. A lot of money in a lot of years. Uh, like, I, I I believe I saw a report when you talk about the Yankees that they expected to um, offer him a deal north of Masahiro Tanaka's seven years at 155 million that he signed for back whenever the Yankees signed him. Uh, so I think this is a contract that's seven years of length, probably maybe eight. Uh, maybe there's an opt out in there somewhere, depending on how he pitches. Uh, but a 25 year old arm that it's a contract that's going to approach two hundred million dollars, probably. Uh, I, I don't think there's going to be a ton of teams truly involved because how many teams are willing to take a risk at that volume? Uh, but I think it's going to be very aggressive, big market teams pursuing. Uh, and you know, I, I certainly believe the Mets are going to be among the most aggressive, if not the most aggressive in pursuit of Yamamoto. Uh, it certainly doesn't guarantee that they're going to land him, uh, but I would peg the contract in the seven to eight years with an opt-out somewhere in it and in the neighborhood of $200 million. Maybe that's 180, maybe that's 185, but somewhere in the vicinity of 200 million. I think so too. I, here's another layer, Joe. Otani's not pitching next year. So if you were a team that thought, hey, I'm going to put at the front of my rotation Shohei Otani, those days are over. He might be at the front of your rotation yeah. two years from now, and even that's a big uphill battle. So Yamamoto, it's a deep pitching class. There's a lot of good pitchers in it. Blake yeah. Snell's going to get paid. Like Those guys are going to get paid. Jordan Montgomery, Aaron Nola, they're all going to get paid. But Yamamoto becomes that much more intriguing with Otani not pitching next year.